Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. Today is the 28th day of the Jewish month of Iyar, and it is the anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem in 1967, Chag Sameach. On this day in 1967, Defense Minister Moshe Dayan spoke to the people of Israel and the world. And he said, This morning, the Israel Defense Forces liberated Jerusalem. We have united Jerusalem, the divided capital of Israel. We have returned to the holiest of our holy places, never to part from it again. To our Arab neighbors, we extend also at this hour, and with added emphasis at this hour, our hand in peace. And to our Christian and Muslim fellow citizens, we solemnly promise full religious freedom and rights. We did not come to Jerusalem for the sake of other people's holy places and not to interfere with the adherence of other faiths, but in order to safeguard its entirety and to live there together with others in unity. Allow me to share with you this morning Two pieces, the sources and the styles could not be more different from each other. And today, I suggest we celebrate both of these following perspectives. The first was written by Sarah Tuttle Singer. As I've shared with you before, she was born in California She made Aliyah a number of years ago. She lives in Israel. She lives in Jerusalem. For a time, she lived in the old city of Jerusalem. She wrote a book about it, which I've quoted to you. Please listen to what she writes. Jerusalem is a wild creature that cannot be defined or squeezed into a box, no matter how hard you try. She is the warrior who suffers no fools, the neighbor who brings over a bowl of soup when you're sick, the woman who drops a few coins into the beggar's cup, the pirate who shares his treasure, the best friend who betrays you, the love of your life that you dream about even when you haven't seen them in 2,000 years. Jerusalem has brought grown men and women to their knees. It has seen empires rise and fall. For centuries, people have wept and dreamt and yearned for her. Jews and Christians and Muslims alike have their eyes on her golden walls, where she rests on the seam between the gentle slopes of the meridian and coastal plain and the rugged expanse of raging desert rolling east. This place, the holiest place in Judaism, and two, one of the holiest places in Christianity and Islam, has captured the imagination and the passion of so many, and I am one of them, hopelessly in love. And I know that I am no more special than the guy who sells oranges by Damascus Gate or the old woman who hands out red string to tie around your wrist for good luck and a blessing on your head. That's why I moved to Jerusalem in the first place, why I went in to live within the ancient walls with this zealot's hunger, too, searching for that unrequited love, the mythic ex the stranger you locked eyes with and felt that rush who then vanished in the crowd. I moved into the old city not knowing what to expect except to expect miracles. Like a shy bride on her wedding night. Like something out of a painting or a dream. But then an old woman dumped a bucket of dirty dirty water out the window without seeing me below, and it splattered on my dress. I told my friend in the Jewish quarter about this the next day, and she just laughed. She said, you know, just last week, 
I heard two tourists outside my bathroom window talking, and one of them said, I wonder if real people live here in the old city of Jerusalem. So I stuck my head out the window and I said, of course we do. And then I flushed the toilet to prove my point. But you must understand something about Jerusalem. You don't get to choose to live here. She chooses you. And it isn't easy. But true love never is. And finally, I am grateful to Rabbi Dr. Stuart Halpern, from whom I learned the following. Fifty-seven years ago today, 28th of ER, in 1967, Rabbi Shlomo Gorin was then the IDF, the Israel Defense Force Chief, Chief Rabbi. Later, he became the Ashkenazi Chief Rabbi of Israel. But at that time, he was the IDF chief rabbi. And he was with the soldiers who first came to the Kotel. And there is the famous photo of him blowing the shofar at that site. And when he first came to this spot where our ancestors worshipped God 2,000 years ago and more, and which we have venerated even in in our absence from it for the last 2,000 years. He called out a prayer. And I would suggest that Rabbi Gorin's words are particularly relevant to us today as we stand fighting on all sides again to make sure that our connection to Israel is eternal and the Jewish people flourishes there. And he said the following words of prayer. He began, Israeli soldiers, beloved of the nation, decorated with courage and victory, may God be with you. And then he said, I am speaking to you from the plaza of the Kotel, the remnant of our holy temple. He quoted the famous words of Yeshayahu Anavi, the prophet Isaiah, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami Yomar Elokechem. Comfort my people, comfort my people, says your God. This is the day we have waited for. The dream of all generations has come true before our eyes. The city of God, the place of the temple, the kotel, the symbol of the redemption of the nation has been redeemed this day by you, the heroes of the Israel Defense Forces. Today you have fulfilled the oath of generations. If I forget Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Indeed, we have not forgotten you, Jerusalem, our holy city. To the nations of the world we declare... We will respect all the holy places of all the nations that seek peace and faith. Their gates will be open to members of all religions. And then he closed with the famous bracha. Blessed are you, God, King of the universe, who has kept us alive, sustained us, and brought us to this day, Shehechiyanu, Vikiyamanu, Vihigiyanu, Lazman Hazer. Kain Yihiratzon Lolam, may this be God's will forever.